by and today we have a very special show kasama natin si Carlene at si Greg we are reading Filipino town voices from Los Angeles an exclusive reading of the excerpts and we're going to pick up right where we left off with a letter written at Tommy's Hamburgers by Noel Alumit Tommy's Hamburgers is an icon in Filipino town this letter was written in March 2001 Dearest Pia after work I eat at Tommy's Hamburgers on Rampart and Beverly. It is world famous, but we have not heard about it in the Philippines. Tommy's is a small shack painted white and red, a Santa suit left on a corner of this city of Los Angeles. Filipino children run around here looking like brown cotton balls pushed by the wind. <laughs> I am remain, reminded of our Indai and Norbert Jr. Tell them I see them when my eyelids close. Policemen and criminals, fancy people and homeless people eat chili burgers against the wall, wiping away melted cheese from their lips. Mm. All are equal when the food is good and the price is cheap. Enclosed is some money that I know you will use wisely. Sometimes I work late. I still go to Tommy's. It is open 24 hours, like my heart that awaits you. Love, Norby. Mm. These really get you in the heart, <laughs> don't they, yeah. these letters? Yeah. <sighs> yeah the, the, the book is full of these. It's just uh, moving. <laughs> and how many times have we read it? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, for five years we've been reading this. And every time we read it, it comes back to life. Yeah. And maybe that's because it's not all our writing. We know uh, the love and care and enthusiasm, the spirit of the people who contributed to this book. It was enormous. Okay, let's have our last reading. <laughs> Carlene? Okay, uh, this is called A Dream That Changed in Name Through the Generations. This was written part of a story that Connie Guerrero, who was a longtime activist and uh, advocate for naming historic Filipino town legally, uh, getting it legally designated. And uh, she died in 2012. She says, my memory is now fading, and I leave it to the young Filipino writers to write their story. My final wish to all of you is for someone to write more about what has made this historic Filipino town historic, as well as what has made this oldest existing Filipino enclave in Los Angeles Filipino. And this is my response to her. We, the dozens of contributors to Filipino Town, Voices from Los Angeles, have done what Connie Guerrero challenged us to do. We have written more about what has made this oldest existing Filipino enclave in Los Angeles Filipino. A quick aside, before there were freeways, believe it or not, in Los Angeles, before they bulldozed their way through our neighborhoods in Filipino Town, there were retainer walls in many of our backyards, which were covered with morning glories. An interesting thing about these flowers is that if you cut them and put them in a glass of water, they'll die. Maybe that's why we all keep going back to Filipino town. We have to be connected to the vine. Wait. Now I ask the same thing of you that Connie Guerrero asked of us. The young Filipinos who will be reading this book, who are watching the program now, write your story. You may be surprised, nearly overwhelmed, by the treasure you discover in yourself. I'm so moved I can't <laughs> talk. Um, uh, unfortunately, we have to wrap up the show. We will have Carleen and Greg back on Kababayan today, definitely to talk about this book and why it's so important that we read this. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Carlene and Greg, you so thank, you. thank you. Two of the three editors of the book. Maraming salamat po. Tune in to Kababayan today next time so that we can tell you more about this book. Thank you very much for watching us, and we'll see you all again next time. Thank you.